everybody. It has been a while since I brought out a new episode. Uh, my entire list is empty. I got to start over from scratch. I have uh, a very cool, super cool guest, though. Uh, Lo-Fi Bay is with me right now talking about her super cool costumes. Welcome to the show, Lo-Fi Bay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty, does <laughs> All right. We, we had like a, 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 a snafu before with uh, a lost episode that's going to be lost forever in FTO archives. But uh, right for the best. Right, hey, right for the best. That was a sign. It was like lo fi. Should we be talking the about this? Up. Should we be talking, about, talking this? about this? Shut the fuck up. So, I'm going yeah. to talk to you after the show because, like, what you were talking about, I know what you're talking about, but. Uh, like I'll, um, I'll, yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about it first. I, I'm all in for it. But uh, let's talk about like your super awesome list of different costumes and things of the such. You, uh, you have a way about your costumes. You, you, you put yourself out there in a way that like, you know, like I'm here. I, I love myself. I love my body. And you're going to see my body. And, and like, it's going to be a fun time seeing what you see. And if you like it that much, I also have an OnlyFans. Like, well, that is that how it started out for you? Was you just uh, putting yourself out there and just seeing what happens and like, you know what, we'll make an OnlyFans on top of it too because you've been doing this for a year, right? I've been doing this for a year. At first, I never, ever thought that I would make an OnlyFans. Just <laughs> never. But let's just say I got pissed off and I wanted to rebel. Right so I made one and then I started making money and I said, well, what do we have here? I mean, yeah, it was repetitive at times, but it really was bringing up in enough income to like fund these costumes. They're expensive. Yeah, they're like, pricey. That's my phone. <laughs> no worries. That's my phone. That's my phone. That's, that's my phone too. Jinx. Jinxy, jinxy. Well, we probably have the same ringtone. <laughs> it's a it's a alarm for me. I set my alarm on this time to go to go work out, but I'm not working out tonight. So yeah. <laughs> really, you do have an alarm that's going off. Oh yeah, I it just I just turned it off. Uh, but uh, you say you have this OnlyFans. Can like, is it still like bringing a good revenue for you to create all these costumes? Yeah. Sometimes I feel bad for still charging people, but some of them don't really care if there's no content being posted they there. just want they to just, support you yeah yeah they just want to support and they just want to see me dress up and i'm like cool i'm happy with that i, I feel that though because like i see your work your your work brings some joy like from your tifa to like your storm like all the way down to like uh what's that what's that that, that one that I, really, <laughs> I really like not the one we just talked about before but uh your black widow costume oh yeah <laughs> i mean hey you know uh, you did some things <laughs> in that costume and, you know, just, you know, hey, <laughs> you know what you look like. It looks great. It looks like a great costume. That costume was probably one of my first, like, when I first started coming back to the cosplay world. Right on, it man. was Black Widow. And then I redid her, and but I lost weight since then. So I wasn't going to have, like, the whole stuff out. It was just <laughs> the only way to get it to not look like a trash bag over top of my body because I could no longer fit it. And I'm like, I wonder if people can notice it because it's, like, real loose in the pants area. But then I'm like, distract them with cleavage. And that's what it did. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. It but, works, though. It definitely works. It like I, I know we talked about before, before like our little problem happened, but like I got I can't I can't have you on the show and not talk about the He-Man costume. The He-Man costume is definitely one of my personal favorites. And like I, I'm loving it. I'm all here for it. And it got published. A lot of people saw it. It's probably like one of the most seen and talked about costumes of yours that like that's out there, in my personal opinion. Is that one of your favorite cosplays? Or do you have like a, a favorite cosplay on top of that one? I'm trying to think. Do I have a favorite cosplay on top of that one? Visually, no. For Ooh. me, He-Man is probably my favorite costume that I ever did because it was my first time shooting outside by myself. And I remember everyone looking at me like, why is this half-naked girl out here dressed like He-Man with a camera by herself? She's crazy. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm always by myself. So, yeah. When I shot that and then saw how it came out, I was just like, I hope you guys like it. <laughs> and then I don't know, it just became like a hit. 
I didn't it, expect it to, but it even did. the Mulan and the Cora, like like those are you shot those yourself? Mulan was shot at my job outside. It was an apartment complex, okay. and Cora was shot in the same park as He Man, but on a bridge. So everything you see me do, I do that by myself. Damn. I don't have, I don't have like help. I wish I did. Straight fire. But the last time I let someone help me, I was like, nope, I don't like it. <laughs> I got to do it myself. <laughs> and it was a Lady D cosplay. My friend was trying to help me shoot that. And it just, he tried his best, but I, I'm really meticulous just, about just stuff. Enjoyment. It happens. Yeah. Like, you're not the first cosplayer that told me that. Like, you know, just, we just weren't feeling it. And I get it. Mm. Like, I understand that completely. It happens. Like, that probably goes the same way for people like um, when like photographers shoot. Yeah, they're probably great at what they do, but they don't know your angles. Exactly. And when you're by yourself, you're a little more comfortable. And that's another reason. Like, there's been times I've had people harass me for photo shoots, charging me low amounts of money. And it just comes off like kind of like, all right, you come off kind of creepy. Hmm. So I, I said to myself to avoid any of that. Yeah. I'm going to watch YouTube and I'm going to learn how to be a photographer. <laughs> you, you're 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 innovator, man. Like you know, all the all the kids out there, all the young women out there who watch you do your stuff, like they got to take notes. Like, like, like uh, this is a person I should be looking out for. Like uh, you're going to be yeah, like in the names of Cutie Pie Sensei and uh, all, all, all the other great black cosplayers out there. Like that's, uh, that's cool to hear. Cutie Pie Sensei was why I started Kai's playing. I saw her, her, uh, who is it? She did Black Panther, but right. she made the suit and she designed it. And I was just like, wow, she's beautiful. She's African American. And I would love to be just like that one day. And okay. then I, I started Kai's playing and I'm still, I still have a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you're getting there, man. You really like, like your Kami, your, your Vito, your, uh, <laughs> you're uh what's the what's the mom from uh invisible you're deborah like uh oh, like yeah. do your, your stuff is like you um, you're going out of the box with it put like your own self inside of all these things like it's, it's really cool yeah i try to do stuff that i like but sometimes i have to do stuff other people may like just to see some variety right because if it was up to me i'd be doing Metal Gear characters or a bunch of Resident <laughs> Evil characters. Nice. Just you would that that's what I like personally. But I you gotta throw it. some variety in there. And sometimes I get a, a cosplay request and they'll ask if I can do somebody and they'll pay for the costume. And I'm like, sure. One example of that is Kagome. That was not my idea. That was someone else's request. And it became one of the most liked cosplays that i've ever done in a while hmm. yeah how do you like surprised. it like no no offense to the person who, who paid for you to do it, but like how, how did you like that cost like that cosplay like you know being i'm the hardest doing. critic on myself <laughs> I'll, so, I'll, take, I'll take that as an answer then right on every time i see something of mine i don't like it it's just like i can do better it's okay but i should have did this or i should have posed that way or i should have edited that so yeah What's your, what's your hardest struggle so far as a cosplayer? Like making the content wise? Yeah. Okay. Avoiding drama that makes you less motivated to want to cosplay. Yo, I feel that. I have to want to be in this community and I want to, you have to want to engage. You have to want to be around it in order to stay in it and things that have happened in the past things that have happened in the present you know you hear things it's just yeah. it takes your spirit away it brings you down and then befriending people in the community who have done some terrible things too brings you down and it makes you lose hope in their culture it's right. like is this what we are now but i keep going because i have people who constantly reach out and they say don't stop Whatever you do, please don't don't let people or whatever it is get to you. And that's why. That's the only reason why I'm still here. If I can inspire people to not be shy and awkward, because I, I still am that shy, awkward girl. 
then fine, cosplay. And for me, it's therapeutic. So when I become other people, it's like I'm escaping my stress, my problems. It's fun doing the makeup and coming up with themes and thinking of what backdrop to use or which light to highlight a costume and stuff like that. And I'm constantly thinking of ways to upgrade my material to make it even better. So I'm never really happy until it's like top notch. And to me, it's, I still have a lot of work to do. You know, I really do. Like, uh, I know like your, your latest one is Jade from Water Combat, but like the one before that is your Boma <laughs> and that Boma, like it's, it's so, it's so happy. There's so much joy in that. Like, so it looks, it looks like you have fun with that set. Like, you know, you really got into it. And the fact that you put that out there to people and give that to people, like, you know, like you, you just give that to them and they, yeah. they're, they're here for it. Yeah. I mean, that, that last, that last photograph in that set was, uh, was, uh, <laughs> it, was it was interesting, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> that was a surprise. I'm like, they're not going to expect this. No, no, we nope. won't. You're a cool dude. Like you really are. You uh, you put it out there. You put out those good vibes. Like you just you just try to have fun. I'm sorry, folks, bring it down for you. Hey, I've had my stories. I've been in this thing for like almost uh, like ten years, man, and uh, it's not easy. You find like some rough people who want to just bring it down, but you know, it's like you're saying, it's not easy. But there's a lot of folks who get some inspiration from you. And you told me before at the beginning of all this that you know you're a little nervous about doing this, you're a little shy about doing this, your first podcast, and like, you know, you don't know how to go about yeah. it, but you know, you seem, like, you seem like a pro, man. <laughs> like you- Oh, you, my hands are shaking. I, I, <laughs> I have social anxiety, I so it. bad, yeah. and I just, I'm trying to not have it, you know? I'm working through it, but I just finally wanted to talk to you to let people kind of see a glimpse of who I am. Right on. I don't really know if people know who I am. They just know <laughs> my pictures and booty, but they don't really know how I think and how I sound and how I talk. And yeah, I finally wanted to get over that fear because I was always shy, like super shy. And then another thing, I had a bad experience with uh, someone who did an interview with me and he was trying to basically highlight my face and I felt like he was more concerned about how I looked on the camera so I could draw in an audience rather than like who I am and what I like so I was just like you know please I don't want to ever go through that shit again never but so far this has been great and I plan on talking to more people. I well. hope you do. I really hope you do. Because, like, you are an interesting person. You're talking about, like, the stuff you're watching. You're talking about, like, like uh, how, <laughs> how much fun you had at work watching the show and the stuff that you like doing. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you got, like, a lot of cool stuff going on with you, man. But uh, I got this one question to ask everybody who joins the show. Everyone who hops on, yeah. I got this one question for everybody. If you listen to the show, you know what the question is. Uh, you've been doing this for a very long time, like a year. But like from how you've been talking, it feels like it's been about three or four for you. Uh, there's a lot of people who support you. Like you started the OnlyFans from this. You have a, a Twitter page from this. Uh, what would you want to say to all those people who've been supporting you, who've been backing you up in all this? I talk to them. I support them. I love them. A lot of them are, are my close friends now. And yeah, some of them are married and all of that, but <laughs> they are legitimately good, good people, yeah. cool dudes. So I'm just like rooting for them and thanking them constantly. And then also I get ideas from them as well. Like, what would you think I would look nice in? Or what would you like to see me in? Is this sexy or too repetitive? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so to me, they're not just people who are only fan subscribers. A lot of them are people who have been talking to me for years and just want to support and don't even look at it. You just got you just have your back right on yeah That's yeah because cool. i'm not really like i don't really consider myself just a sexy cosplayer that's just trying to lure in the money yeah. i'll just tell people straight up i want costumes i don't care about the money give me give me give me the costume <laughs> so 
Yeah, but I do have to make it sexy because if I don't, won't get as much traction, and that's what pisses me off. Yeah. But that's the culture. I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, uh, you you would know better about that than I do. But I don't know. Like, you, I think like you know, like some of your some of your more timid stuff, like the like the Beatle costume, like the, the Deborah costume, or uh, even like like the Daphne that you have, I mean, like the the Star Wars, the Ahsoka Tanu, and the Cloud. I don't know. Those are some of my favorites too. So I hear what you say. Those are my favorites too. <laughs> and I will get weird comments like I did Sasuke, and there was some asshole was like, ooh. She should have opened her shirt more. So, like, it's become this thing where they expect each cosplay to always be just, like, titties and ass, you know? Titties and ass. And sometimes I don't want to keep just doing titties and ass. I don't want people to think that that's all I can do. No, I'm just trying to be smart about this and market myself in a way where you have a little bit of titties, a little bit of ass, (laughs) but show some talent, show some, you know foam smithing or whatever so i actually did he-man and i was supposed to do lionel and i already built lionel's costume the belt and everything but it's just been sitting on my kitchen counter for like ever since summer (laughs) you serious right now yeah i wanted lionel to look different and i also made a bionic arm like a the whole arm is made of gold and i did upload it and i archived it I wanted to give him like a bionic arm and I have like these gold claws and stuff that go on it. And I really need to get that costume out there. Yo, like, who are you right now? What? I wanted to challenge myself because the furry arm would have been too easy. So I said, you know, since you're getting into foam smithing, you got to do something a little more challenging. And I'm, I, I'm still hard on myself because the ultimate goal is to build RoboCop. I want to cosplay as female RoboCop, but I need to start getting better at foam smithing before I, I can get on that level. I've I seen a cosplayer do RoboCop and they won an award for it. Uh, Comic Book Girl 19 did one a few years ago and she won an award at a couple of different conventions with her RoboCop. Was it Cardboard Box? It was, yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> Ooh man, look at you got some goals, man. I'm here for it. Well, FTO is definitely here for that, for that greatness. Uh, what what are you you're showing the bod? What are you like? You give me some cover, whatever it is you want to put yourself as. We are here for it, like uh, hands down, 110. percent uh, Where can people find you? I know we talked about OnlyFans. Where else can people find you? You mean what do you mean, like where your, your, your handles, your tags? Oh, it's just low fi Bay, even on Facebook. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Lo-Fi Bay. Lo-Fi Bay. That's it. That's it. Google Lo-Fi Bay and that's it. Sometimes low fever, which is a medication, pops up. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just Lo-Fi Bay. <laughs> you got a good vibe about you. I dig it. Like, uh, it's been cool talking with you. Like, talking with one of my old friends, man. This is cool. I dig this. Uh, I'm D, FTO Nerd Talk. Lo-Fi Bay, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Bye. <laughs>